Okay, so we have a boiler pump here. This is a steam boiler pump that feeds condensate water back into the boiler. Now, this pump has been leaking for a while. The pump itself has been leaking. The motor's fine, even though it looks like it's got some deterioration, some, some rust and whatnot. The motor's fine, it's just the pump itself is leaking. You can actually see sort of the water damage back in there. So we're gonna change that pump out today. So we have a new pump here and all the stuff we need for it right here. We got the instructions. So I'm gonna take probably 10 minutes to go through this, read the manual, and then we're gonna tackle getting this pump replaced. Before we start, I'll show you kind of how this system works here. So there's a ball valve for this tank. This is just um, the condensate tank coming back from the building. We have to isolate that so the suction side of the pump is not getting any water. The discharge side of the pump, which is fed through this Bolimo actuator, goes off in behind and feeds the boiler. There are two pumps because there are two boilers. Now what controls the pump? There's a low water cutoff right here. All right. Basically what that does is when the water drops off to a certain point, and you can actually see the water level right here. When the water lo level drops off to a certain point, it starts the pump, okay, opens the actuator, feeds the boiler, the level rises, the low water cutoff recognizes that and shuts the pump off and the spring loaded Bolimo actuator returns to the closed position. So we have to locate the power. See on this there's two sources of power inside. So we have to locate the power that feeds the pump. Even though I know this pump is not going to start during operation, we're going to have to locate it, get rid of it. We've got the water side isolated. All right, and then we're gonna remove this, pop the new one in. Okay, the pump assembly's been pulled out, and one thing I'm noticing is the new pump. The new pump housing here and the old one, they don't line up, so this one's a little bit higher, so that means we're gonna have to tear down this piping and build it back up. But this piping's starting to rust, and we have some gunk in there anyway, so what we're gonna do is replace all the piping up to the unions on this one because of the height difference and because of what I'm seeing inside. We're not going to replace the entire piping for the whole boiler right now because we're just getting this pump going so we can start these boilers up, get them fired up for testing and ready for the winter and that piping can be dealt with a little bit later on because we got two boilers. We can isolate one during the, the milder temperatures in the winter and deal with the piping later for now. Okay, so next problem, these set screws they are stripped, okay? Because of the leaking water, these things are rusted out. We can't get an Allen key inside of them to turn them. We're gonna have to drill these things out to get this coupling off of this motor shaft. Okay, so the pump is off of this. I pulled it right off and I'm seeing this water damage. I don't like this in here. Now, I tried to drill a little through these set screws and this one just broke right apart. And I think in behind here, we're gonna be so seized up and rusted, we're gonna cause damage to the shaft, trying to take this coupling off. So I've got approval from the customer to replace this whole entire motor. So we're gonna get a new motor, a new pump, and some new fittings to go along with it. So what we're gonna do right now is put the pump together as best we can without fastening it to the motor. We'll get a new motor, and there'll have to be continuation to this video once we get the new motor.